Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Newsmakers Journal of the Vaccine Year. It is Wednesday, January 27th. I'm Jerry Roberts, and we are talking about the vaccine today with a very special guest, Anne Louise Bardock, nationally uh, renowned journalist, author of, uh, of four books, winner of the Penn USA Awards. I could, uh, I could go on, but she has now uh, penned uh, a very moving essay, which is going to be the lead story in this week's Montecito Journal uh, out tonight about uh, the difficulty and the struggle people are having trying to get a vaccine, very desperate uh, attempting. And Annie, thanks so much for being with us. Sure. Uh, I, it's a very personal piece that you write and you talk about, uh, you say in the last two weeks, I know of six new cases of COVID four hospitalized and three excluded from the county's rigid tier system because they were not 75. Of course, the county has said the, you know, we have a limited amount of vaccine. The only people that can get it uh, are healthcare workers and people 75 and over, but there's a whole group of people, mm -hmm. particularly 65 and over who are at risk by definition, who are having trouble. What's, uh, what did you find in reporting this piece? Well, there's a reason that the state and the federal government and the CDC has first tiered 65 and up. Uh, when you're 65, you're eligible for Medicare. You're officially a senior citizen. Uh, I don't understand why health officials here in Santa Barbara uh, level that. I certainly understand there's logistical problems and there's shortages, et cetera. But it seems like an arbitrary uh, decision that is not based on the most vulnerable patients in our county. Uh, let me give you a, for example, several pharmacies in Santa Barbara County were following state and federal guidance. Well, Re Re Ralph's, uh, Kroger's at, at, at Ralph's for- Right, you, Ralph's Pharmacy on Carrillo was in fact the go-to place uh, for all the specialists here in town. The immunologists, the oncologists, the uh, pulmonologists who were like, what am I gonna do with all my patients? Uh, even if you don't have cancer today, but you once had cancer, you have damage likely from chemotherapy and radiation that is gonna put you at a higher risk. Uh, so these specialists were sending everybody over to Ralph's Pharmacy and whatever places they knew about uh, to get vaccinated right away. Because in their view, these people should have been at the top of the list, which is not to say that people 75 and over aren't certainly worthy, <laughs> absolutely. It's just that age and the decision by the, the health officials to stick to just 75 is just too rigid and is causing a good deal of problems for residents who are now ill, plus the various doctors who have been trying desperately to get them vaccinated. And I mean, what happened in the short version was Ralph's Pharmacy was one of these places, Dignity Health up in Santa Maria, and others that I think that would like to remain nameless were saying to themselves, federal state guidance supersede uh, county. And by the way, it makes a lot more sense. And they were treating all these people. Hundreds of people were getting vaccinated through January. I was one of them who had an appointment and I made it as soon the day was announced. I had an appointment. I then got, a, I was part of a mass email from an immunologist here in town warning that many of her patients suddenly on January 18th forward were showing up for their appointments and being turned away. Let me read this. Let me, let, me, let me just read from your piece a little bit. It's sure. very powerful stuff. Until January 18th, Kroger Pharmacy at Ralph's was filling in a crucial age gap, vaccinating those 65 and plus per state and CDC guidance and saving lives. The pharmacy has been the go-to resource for immunologists, pulmonologists, 
for their highest risk patients. After all, state and federal law supersedes county rules, except as is too often the case in Santa Barbara. In mid-January, county health officials ordered Ralph's Pharmacy on Korea to stop providing vaccines to those 65 to 74, regardless of comorbidities or the pleas of doctors or any other health considerations. And then I wanna read, you quote a very prominent pulmonologist, Jeffrey Kupperman here in town, who says shutting off this segment of Santa Barbara's population is worrying health professionals. Well, you say that he says, we are concerned that we can't get our most at risk patients vaccinated now, said pulmonologist Jeffrey Kupperman, former head of Cottage Hospital's pulmonary department who previously ran its critical care. So in fact, it wasn't a case where they said, I'm sorry, we don't have any vaccine. They were turning people away because the county was saying this at-risk group, 65 and over, and people with comorbidities, we're not prepared to give them, we don't want to give them the vaccine yet. Is that right? That is correct. And I have confirmed by pharmacy staffers uh, who obviously want uh, anonymity uh, and uh, even a supervisor. Uh, the health department found out evidently that Ralph's and other pharmacies were going with federal and state guidance and they called them. And according to two pharmacy staffers I spoke to, the health department said to them, you either cancel these people out, the 65 plus, uh, regardless of comorbidities, or we're gonna pull your license. That's, a, that's what I was told by uh, responsible, reliable pharmacy staff. And when my own appointment came up, uh, <laughs> that certainly, was the case now initially for the first not, week let me just to, to clarify so you're not 75 you're 65 or over perhaps some underlying health issues so obviously you feel as i think many people in that category i got to get this vaccine i got it you know I, I i really need it you made an appointment you showed up and they said sorry we can't do it uh they the, for the first week, uh, when I heard about it, I was tipped off by very specialists saying, we have a crisis here. Our, our, our most vulnerable people are being turned away. And when I called the pharmacy, they said, look, it would take everybody we have to phone everybody. They said it would literally be hundreds of phone calls to the 65 plus people registered for us to cancel them. So initially, they just, people were showing up, some in wheelchairs, uh, some of them visibly ill and saying, I'm here for my vaccine and finding out, I'm sorry, the health, the health department said, we can't give it to you. And as I understand it from various people on both sides of the counter, it was a very emotional scene. One person, one staffer said to me, there were tears on both sides of the counter. And they, these people were turned away, and um, and there still is no resolution. What came out next, the next day, uh, I got word through the COVID grapevine, Dignity Santa Maria is taking care of people. And um, I was able to register, and I went up there, more than a little anxious and nervous about what could happen next. and. Um, God love dignity health. When I said, is there some kind of age limit here? The woman smiled at me and she said, we don't turn away anyone here. We're just so glad you're here. And I must tell you, was, <laughs> I don't get emotional <laughs> publicly. <laughs> and it, I, it got me. And then let, let me just, uh, uh read another little bit of the, the piece that's in uh, the Montecito Journal is out, uh, out tonight, actually, uh, in Louise Bardock's front page uh, piece. Uh, Consider that in mid-December, vaccinations began at hospitals and medical offices for all 
doctors, nurses, staff, employees, cafeteria staff, custodians, cleaning personnel were all reportedly included. That's all good news. There was just one omission, patients. Hence, cardiology and cancer patients whose immune systems had been compromised or levels were not on the list. Somehow, this really got me, somehow the most vulnerable in the community didn't make the cut. And then you talk about how you know some of these people um, uh, who then contracted COVID during outpatient hospital visits. Yes. Uh, go yes. ahead. If you know anybody, uh, and we all do unfortunately, uh, in our families or ourselves, who've had cancer or a serious heart surgery or brain or anything, uh, you are typically an outpatient and then you have to go for care. People uh, may have to go to radiation treatments every day. They may need immunotherapy four days a week. They may need chemotherapy. Uh, they may, may need postcardial brain care. They need, most serious patients need to return to the hospital for outpatient care. And to my shock and horror, I, in, the, in, just, in just the last two weeks, I heard about six people that I personally knew who had serious COVID. And some of them, uh, at least two, maybe three, contracted it while at the hospital uh, and were told as much. It's not speculative. They were, they were informed because the contact tracing is quite extensive. So while I think it's a good idea to vaccinate your custodial workers, your clerical people, your bookkeepers in the back rooms, I would think front and center at the top of the list will be your patients in the hospital at that moment and those coming daily or weekly for their treatments. Yeah, and what I like about this piece is that it's real and it's raw. It's about real people. And it's about a conversation that every one of a certain age or everyone who has certain health problems has been engaged in. People are desperate to get this vaccine. And, and the information that we're getting through the media is basically coming out of those county briefings and the governor's briefings where he's flailing around who knows what today. Right. Uh, and they're saying, oh, everything's fine. We're doing a heck of a job patting themselves on the back. So what do you make of this? They're just trying to color within the lines on this 75 and over thing. I mean, if somebody's, if there's vaccine left at the end of the day, if people have canceled appointments, what is wrong with providing a vaccine to somebody who's 65 or over for somebody who's got health problems? That, that's what I don't understand. First of all, I think it's a, there's already a problem when the county of Santa Barbara says, okay, the state and the federal and the CDC has told us to go with 65 and up, but guess what? We're doing our own thing. I always think there's a problem procedurally when the county goes, <laughs> goes on their own. Now I understand the way they're thinking. When I asked a county official and I spoke to some supervisors off record, uh, they said the health officials just wanted, one of them said they just wanted to check the right boxes. And the right box did not include 65 or up, but um, so they kind of took a mess from the state. This is where Santa Barbara, County has a unique talent uh, in the 30 years I've lived here, I've been able to observe. The state is often muddled and unclear. Uh, the, like COVID, like cannabis, they put out some muddled guidance. But the County of Santa Barbara seems to have a gift for taking muddled guidance and making it much worse. <laughs> they don't look at it and say, how can we make this effective and serve our constituents? And I think there's a real issue here that we need help. We need an A-team. And whatever we're doing in Santa Barbara County is, is not good enough. We need reinforcements. We need 
top epidemiologists. Uh, Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital has a very good person, Dr. Fitzgibbons uh, there. But you need people um, embedded in the health department, the public health department, who are absolute pros with epidemiology and statistics. Um, this is not to say people aren't hardworking and diligent. I'm well, just let's, I mean, let's say, I mean, you, 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 you point out in the piece that Dr. Charity Dean, uh, one of the top people, certainly in California, if not the nation, right, previously worked for the county, but somehow was not hired on. Uh, and now we have someone who's the chief health officer who isn't a, an MD. Is that correct? And, and yes, that, that's correct. Uh, Dr. Charity Dean is uh, a state and nationally uh, well-regarded epidemiologist. As I understand it, she worked AIDS in Africa. She's got what they call an impeccable resume. Uh, I don't know her personally, uh, but I, I know that she has a very good reputation. Uh, she was our health officer. Uh, she then uh, was the acting director of public health but the supervisors in 2017 decided not to give it to Dr. Dean and they recruited uh, Van de Reynosa, uh, a, a very efficient, I think competent person, but a different skill set than uh, an epidemiologist uh, of vast experience. Well, needless to say, the minute the supervisor said, let Charity Dean go, uh, the, this Jerry Brown who knows good top people, he hired her in a New York minute and installed her up at the top of the state health department. Um, I just don't know why the county would let a top epidemiologist go. Now, in fairness, in 2017, we weren't having a big epidemic. Right. Right. They may be thinking, hey, health, health department, what could it be? Polio shots, you know, smallpox, make sure the kids are getting the flu vaccination. They may not have foreseen this, in fairness. The, when I did talk to some of the top specialists at Cottage Hospital, they all said, you know, Dr. Dean was one of them. They respected her. They, they regarded, they, they trusted her. And one of the issues I think that could resolve this or move forward is if they create a COVID czar here and it's an MD who knows every oncologist, uh, cardiologist, immunologist, all the top uh, vulnerable risk groups and has a daily contact and says, who are your most vulnerable patients? Yeah, no, I think that's a really important point because who has the vaccine? Okay, Cottage has some and Sansom has some and right. Dignity Health and Ralph's has some and Kroger's and it's, and it's kind of all over. I mean, I'm old enough to vaguely remember when we got the polio vaccine and there were mass vaccination sites. I mean, that's what's happening in LA, you know, Dodger Stadium, Disneyland and so on and so forth. Here it's so atomized, it's so broken up uh, that no one really seems to be in charge. And, and I mean, let's face it, if we want to trace this all the way back, it goes back to the, the, the Trump administration, which had no plan for distributing. So there are shortages. People are, right. the distribution chain all along has been, I don't want to say bungled, but it certainly had its uh, rough patches. And okay, so we have X amount of vaccine here. How are we using it? Are we using it on the most vulnerable people? And I think right. what your piece does is point to the fact that there are a lot of vulnerable people who are being left out at this point. And some of them are getting sick and some of them are getting very sick. Uh, and and some of them may die. <laughs> uh, let me add that last piece is that not everybody survives COVID. And if you are in Cottage Hospital, you've had open heart surgery or brain surgery or uh, very serious chemotherapy, you would be the most vulnerable. Those patients would have the most reduced immune ca 
capability to fight COVID. So we don't know this yet, but I, I am fearful that uh, unless this policy is changed, we're gonna lose some vulnerable people. Yeah, and you said, as you say in the lead, the devastating piece for Santa Barbara County are those who are fighting for their next breath in Cottage Hospital after being denied or deemed ineligible for vaccination by the county. I mean, I think that really, really sums it up. And it's- uh, I'll give you, um, of course, everybody wants privacy and everybody deserves confidentiality. But I know a case of somebody just shy of their 75th with multiple comorbidities, uh, couldn't be any more high risk, couldn't get a vaccine. And, you know, and then I'm going to say something else here. Yes, the 65 and up uh, are, are clearly at almost as vulnerable as the 75 uh, if they have comorbidities for sure. And most people by the time you coast past 50 are going to have something going wrong. But let me point out that we have plenty of 30 and 40 year olds here who have cystic fibrosis. One of the pulmonologists made this point to me that cystic fibrosis, which just devastates your lungs, would make COVID a, almost a death sentence. But they can't vaccinate them if they're a 30 year old person with uh, cystic fibrosis, maybe next year. Let's say you're, you have a teenager who develops leukemia. Well, they're 17, too bad. Uh, when are we gonna get around to the 17 year old? And let me put it another way. I have a, I'm very ha happy and lucky to have a very fit husband who plays singles tennis a couple days a week with a bunch of guys, all of whom are 75 plus. Some of them run marathons. Some of them haven't seen a doctor in 10 years. Uh, some of them were former athletes. Uh, all of them have been vaccinated which is not to say I want to take it away from anybody elderly, but we have people 75 and up who are fit and we have leukemia patients who are 20. And there should be a COVID czar in this loop who says, yes, we're gonna go by age, but here's our most vulnerable. We need to get them in here regardless of age. Now, clearly, if you have a comorbidity and you're post 60 or 65, it's worse. But there's certainly going to be people younger than that who are, 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 are very impaired. And yeah, it just, I mean, it seems like the criteria are really not uh, very nuanced uh, or very uh, substantive in terms of the specifics of the population. It's really a Okay, everybody 75 and over, you know, needs to, I, I mean, it's just, that's, is that the right marker? I think is the question that, that, that your piece raises very powerful. And, and also, if you're, if, if you are told to go to Cottage Hospital for regular treatments, whether that's oncology, cardiology, or endocrinology, if you need to be there for regular treatments, whatever it is, chemo, radiation, or whatever, immunotherapy, or heart stents, or whatever, you should be protected. If there's enough vaccine for everybody working in the ca cafeteria, whether you're 20 or 40, there should be enough for our oncology patients. Um, and let me say again, anybody who's been through cancer has a damaged immune system. It comes with the territory. Uh, unfortunately, if you've had surgery, heart surgery, you have a damaged immune system. So it's not just the people in the hospital, it's all the survivors. Uh, and saying, well, I'm sorry, pal, you're not 75. It just doesn't make any sense. And I think part of the problem is, is that we need a highly respected MD who knows all the specialists who is in daily contact and those specialists say, here's my top group, here's my top group, and make sure that somewhere they're included sooner than later. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, we just got a couple minutes. I, let, let me just ask you. So uh, are you now uh, an editor at the Montecito Journal? How does this piece uh, happen to end up on the, on, on the front page of the, of, of, of the, of the Montecito Journal? No, I am, uh, as I've told everybody for five years, I am retired, I, I think, but there have been exceptions. And um, I know there's been a series of exceptions. So I'm trying to devote myself to some books, uh, but I will write a piece uh, when the steam rises above my eyebrows, I'm up and uh, my husband says, God damn it, just write it. Okay, and then it just comes out. Um, I noticed that there's two topics that kind of get to me. One is the odor of cannabis that gets worse and worse if you live in the South County. Uh, and the other is COVID every day getting these phone calls. Let me um, say something kind of carefully just to give a, 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 a example. Um, there is a former very highly respected official in Santa Barbara County who had, had a, a heart attack, a very serious heart attack. And she also had cancer. And I will let her reveal her own identity. But I just want to give you a for instance. But she wasn't, she's not 75. But with a, a, a very significant heart attack and cancer treatments, she went over to Ralph's two days ago. She went for her appointment. She said, I made it when it would, you, you know, I made it, I stood in line, I waited for three weeks for my appointment. And they said, we're really sorry. We have to turn you away, the health department. And this is uh, a, a person of, of considerable stature in this county um, who was turned away. Um, I was told that there were terrible scenes. And then um, I was able to go up to dignity and I even had letters in my purse if they needed it, you know, plead, you know, from, you know, uh, but somebody said to me, you could have 10 letters from Fauci. The county is gonna nix it, you know, <laughs> uh, they're gonna bit. And at dignity up in Santa Maria, God love them. They just couldn't have been more gracious to everybody. Yeah, there was a sign that said somewhere 75 and up, but they didn't ask you. You just walked in and, um, and when I asked about it, that's what they said. Well, I'm sorry to say that I heard Sunday night from a friend who then urgently signed up, a couple of friends, that they got a call saying, we're really sorry, but we've been told we have to cancel your appointment. Okay, the, the county cracked down on-, on, on Well, the I don't know if, because Dignity operates their own system outside, but it, what I'm told is political pressure came to bear. <laughs> pressure came to bear for Dignity, which has been outstanding Samaritans throughout this all. And by the way, everybody, please shop at Ralph's. Be kind to those staffers. They, they were trying. And, and by the way, they were completely uh, compliant with state and federal law. All right, we got to leave it there. Anne Louise Bardock, thank you so much. Your page one story is in the Montecito Journal this week, uh, out tonight, Wednesday, in the stands tomorrow. So uh, definitely read that. And uh, thank you so much for the work that you do. And we're all glad you got a vaccine and, and, and <laughs> you, stay, you stay safe. Thank you uh, very much, Annie. Okay, my pleasure, Derek.